So yeah, good lesson today. Lesson 314. Brace for impact. <laughs> I seek a future different from the past. <clears throat> so we've been talking about seeing that innocent part of us. Like yesterday, we talked about seeing the innocence below the surface layer activity of the mind, the conditioning, the reactions, and sinking deeper into the heart of the self where we see what I am is actually, like Mark said, totally beautiful, totally free, totally innocent. So this lesson is a really good um, step forward from that. I seek a future different from the past. <clears throat> from a new perception of the world, there comes a future very different from the past. The future now is recognized as but extension of the, of the present. Past mistakes can cast no shadows on it, so that fear has lost its idols and its images, and being formless, it has no effects. Death will not claim the future now, for life is now its goal, and all the needed means are happily provided. Who can grieve or suffer when the present has been freed, extending its security and peace into a quiet future filled with joy? Father, we were mistaken in the past and choose to use the present to be free. Now do we leave the future in your hands, leaving behind our past mistakes and sure that you will keep your present promises and guide the future in their holy sight. So a lot of great imagery here. Um, this is one of those lessons that like almost every line we could unpack for an hour. <laughs> um, so that we're talking about the past in this lesson. And a good question to ask is like, what is the past? When we use that word, what does the past represent? Everything the course uses um, in its terminology represents a deeper truth. So what, is, what does the past represent? And I would argue that the past represents guilt and that's it. Hmm. The past is just guilt and it's nothing more than that. How do we know? Because once we get rid of guilt, we find there's no more past either. There's no more past to relate to. Our mind never goes back to the past. It's not interesting anymore. There's no meaning to it anymore. Um, you know, you may recall a beautiful memory every now and then, but that's the only relationship you have with the past once you see the total futility and unreality of guilt. Guilt is the thing that keeps us going back to the past and referencing the past and dragging it into the present and projecting it into the future, right? So I like the imagery it uses of like leaving, now we leave the past behind us. It gives us this image of like, you're driving in a car, uh, which represents the present moment. <clears throat> you know, this is the vehicle you're driving in, in the now. And in the present, it's the best vehicle. Like it's a Lexus or something, a Tesla. I don't know. It's the best car you can imagine. But you're driving with a big trailer behind you. <laughs> and that trailer has all the junk from your past, all your guilt, all your mistakes, all your regrets, all your grievances, just loaded up in that trailer. And it's you know, ricketing up and down the road and stuff's falling out everywhere and other cars are swerving to avoid your mess. <laughs> so this is like how we live in the present when we're carrying the past guilt with us. And the key is like, what, why am I carrying this trailer full of junk? I don't want junk. Well, guilt is the linchpin, isn't it? That's keeping that trailer attached to your present moment. So once we get rid of guilt, we leave the past behind. And now all that weight is off. The burden has been lifted. Oh, wow. How, what a burden to be free from, from my past. And I think here's the ticket, Mark, is that we have to realize you literally cannot fear the future without a past. Yeah. Especially according to what ACIM teaches. It's literally impossible because you're only projecting your fearful past into the future. You know, that's why it says past mistakes can cast no shadows on it, on the future, right? That I'm reaching for. You, you can't project your future into your past, <clears throat> right? It only works one way <clears throat> because the future hasn't happened yet. So at best, you can just speculate what may happen, but the past appears to be a fact, <laughs> yeah. right? It's evidence. I know for sure that this happened and this is who I am. This defines me and yada, yada. So we, we carry all these burdens of guilt from our past, and then that creates a fearful future, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Bad things may happen again to me. 
Life may be cruel again to me. Someone may betray me again. I may lose something I need or love again. Life may let me down again. That's what we project into the future. And it's all coming from past evidence that the mind's collected. And so we find again that once guilt is over, you just never revisit the past. All past mistakes just become lessons in the present. Yeah. They become lessons that you learn from the past and you bring the past into the now and let it transform you. So to seek a future different from the past means to seek a future without guilt, total freedom. So the question is, how do we get rid of guilt? This is what the course aims for, right? And the course says a, a number of things about how to get rid of guilt. It's not even how to get rid of it, right? Because it doesn't actually exist. It's really about how do I see guilt for what it really is? And then the illusion will have no more effect on me like the snake and the rope. It's like, how do I get rid of the snake? Well, you don't really get rid of the snake, right? You, you see it's just a rope and then it loses its effect as the lesson says. So for me, Mark, personally, in my experience, the way that guilt ended for me was through two things. One, seeing its purposelessness, like it serves me absolutely no value whatsoever. It only keeps me anchored to the past and creates more suffering. But number two, and the bigger one for me, was seeing that guilt is arrogance. Seeing that it's just absolute pride to be in guilt. Because when we see arrogance, I think it has a really profound effect on our consciousness. And you know, we've all had this experience where you sort of, um, you get really embarrassed because you see that you were really like full of ego in that moment and you didn't realize it and everyone else could see it. And you're like, oh man, it was so embarrassing. Like it makes you never wanna do that again because seeing your own pride is a very kind of painful experience, but that pain really is crystallized into something beautiful because it births in you humility. You, you no longer want to be arrogant, which means your awareness is open to your arrogance. And so you enter every situation with more humility. You're not as quick to throw out your opinions and biases about everything. You know, it just lowers your, um, your negative frequency so much to carry that humility and so all those moments of seeing your arrogance and it's <clears throat> and even the painful experience that it is really birth something beautiful in you. And so why is guilt arrogance? I think the best way we can put it is that guilt is arrogance because it's as if you're trying to purchase salvation through suffering. You know what I mean? You're trying to make a transaction. Like I can buy my true nature. I can buy freedom. I can purchase Christ vision, I can purchase salvation with more pain and suffering. That's kind of the religious mentality that we Absolutely. had in Christianity. And we saw in Christianity that that's actually arrogance, right? Salvation isn't a toy to be purchased. It's not something that you can, you know, beat yourself enough. And then God's like, all right, you know, you've suffered enough. I'll exchange you some salvation. That's totally an arrogant mindset. Salvation comes through humility. And all guilt does is is remove me farther from humility. So when you just, you start to see these things and you put these pieces together, you realize guilt is the snake that doesn't exist. It's actually a rope. A rope can be very useful. You can use a <laughs> rope for lots of helpful things. Um, guilt is like that, right? It's actually just mistakes I made in the past because of my own ignorance of truth. And so now they just become lessons I learn in the present, which expand me closer to freedom and salvation. And that's, it's a free gift, right? You can't purchase it. Uh, God offers that gift to us freely once we come humbly to, to ask for it. I'm just a passenger on this ride today, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is that new one? Like your, your fire hose time today is a fire hose day. <laughs> it's for a sure. fire hose day. It is. It's awesome. I mean, you said you, you, you said so many wonderful things that make this lesson for me 10 times deeper. You know, I just love that, especially all the way back to guilt being the linchpin that connects you to the past. Like that's really, um, that's a great visual. Yeah. You know, the trailer of guilt. Yeah. So now we don't need to go into the trailer and dig through our past and see <laughs> what's in there. Now we can actually just release the linchpin and let the trailer go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? We do that, right? It's like we pull over on the side oh. of the road. We get out. There's got to be some meaning in here and you're digging through. And Oh, more than that. We invite people into the trailer. Come here. <laughs> come, here. come look at my past. That's all yep. I want to show yeah, absolutely. you. Absolutely. 
come here and you know and, and everyone else is like oh dude no like, yeah. i'm not interested in that that yeah, kind of smells yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah meanwhile you're right like it's beautiful that there's this whole future just beautiful shining possible but it doesn't become possible if we're in the trailer looking through all our past broken toys like it right, just right. we don't we don't even see it we don't that that's the amazing part so the um seeking a future different from that past even that that just like points us in that direction it just turns us away you know so yeah where it really and that's the beauty of and i love what you said too about you know the purpose of the past being in the moment when we're in the moment is to serve us is to reveal whatever the gifts are and then let the rest go you know that's a very different relationship with anything of the past that comes here versus recycling it and being certain that it's true yeah yeah and that you know past mistakes can cast no shadows on it that's the beautiful part when we do release that that big old trailer that we've been carrying around um then like you said and you said it very clearly there's nothing there's nothing to inhibit what is possible yeah. and we have access to infinite power like there's so i just know i'm certain mm. i mean everyone teach you know all great teachers teach it that there's so much power that we have we use so little of it we use so little of it but when we release that past and we turn our attention to the present moment causing a new future I, what so much good so much good can be done through us that's transformation yeah that yeah. is that is the real transformation losing the past by losing guilt because they're the same thing just some synonyms really guilt and past yeah. are the same yeah. and we see that people who are you know committing wrongdoings in the world creating suffering in the world are just acting out their past aren't they yep they're yep. trying to protect themselves from that past happening again and all the defenses are up and and we call that sin mm -hmm. it's like what a derogatory way to des to describe that it's like it's so so much more innocent than that it's it's immaturity yeah like a child doesn't know what it's doing but you don't get angry at the child and you want to punish the child and make it suffer because of its mistake you're just like yeah it's just an immature little kid it doesn't know any better yeah and as we said yesterday you can absolutely <clears throat> learn to see adults like that. <laughs> like, in absolutely. fact, most adults haven't left their childhood. Completely. Walking like patterns. Babies walking around. Walking patterns. Walking patterns. Yeah. And when you see that, how can you have anything but compassion for it? Yeah. And, you know, back to the linchpin, the guilt, because what's coming to me is inside of that is what keeps, keeps us attached to it and stuck in is it, it says, you're bad and wrong, hide don't tell people what you've done they won't like then it plays hide your thing. sin hide your sin because there's something wrong with you and then the guilt is won. then then you then you're bound you're bound so tightly which is why the true gifts of spiritual communities that really can hold the light are people are free to bring all of that garbage to the light no shame here no guilt here yeah. oh i just did this oh yeah that happened five years ago. Oh yeah, right, that right. that's what occurred. But when there's no guilt or no no um, uh, shame, it doesn't disconnect you, and it actually it it brings you forward into mm -hmm. the connection. Yeah. So that's what we got to pay attention to. The guilt is is got some glue in there that it kind of like. Oh, it's sticky. It's sticky. It pulls you in, and it and it it says, you know, keep this hidden, dude. Keep this hidden because this is the one that will really prove your piece of crap <laughs> <laughs> it's true that's that's why it feels so good to be seen by others yeah when we, when we you know like in christianity confess our sins to one another or just when we when we get something off our chest that's been a, and we're carrying maybe a fear we have or a struggle in our present day life with our family or something and we're afraid to acknowledge it to look vulnerable and there's people community there may, even one person just holding space for you and just yep. giving you that loving acceptance. It just annihilates all the ego's defenses. Cause it's yeah. like, you see, this person isn't tying me to my past. They don't care about my past. They're, they're seeing me in the present with love and compassion. And so the mind doesn't get this intellectually, but intuitively the mind understands, wow, maybe the past isn't such a big deal. Cause I've been making it this huge deal. Yeah. But when I confess something to someone else, a burden or a mistake, 
and they just see me with love and hold space and let it be what it is with non-judgment, that proves to the mind, hey, your illusion of the past may, maybe doesn't exist. Yeah. Maybe you're making it all up. Yeah. Drop the maybe on that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. And remember, you know, we haven't talked a lot about details of our wonderful retreat, but I think one of our most powerful experiences was, remember, we did those dyads where people shared oh my gosh so what powerful. they were holding against themselves and they you know just one on one with a with a brother or sister in love they they were able to you know there was a process where we exchanged our list and we did this forgiveness experience and people were just crying and people were just feeling so it's scary it's scary to step into that kind of vulnerability but the gifts that come with it are absolutely amazing yeah there wasn't a dry eye in the building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and it was this lesson really, wasn't it? We were, oh, yes. we were releasing the guilt linchpin, letting that trail go so that we could be creating a new future. And the eye gazing as well. It yeah. was so powerful for people. They just <laughs> like, wow, to be seen like that, to just look into someone's soul and just have nothing but love and acceptance was yeah. a shift in consciousness for many. Uh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So let's get rid of that guilt trailer. Yeah, please, please wait no longer. <laughs> let's dump that thing in a ditch on the side of the yes. road. <laughs> yeah. So let's close our eyes and uh, just bring that visual back into our mind's eye that when I carry the past with me, it's like driving the best, most beautiful car you can imagine and carrying the junkiest, oldest rickety trailer you can imagine. Why would you want to bring that thing with you? Instead, it can be transformed. Instead, it can become treasures in the now because of the lessons that the past was there to teach. And so we return again to this recognition that guilt is the linchpin that keeps us tied and bound to our past. And so to let the past go, we have to get rid of that linchpin of guilt. And to do that, we have to see that guilt serves no purpose. To wallow, to drag our feet in the mud, to feel shame, to feel guilt, remorse, and regret. It doesn't lead us closer to anything we want. And it only leads us closer to everything that we do not want. So take this holy moment, look deep inside of yourself and decide, really decide with your will, if you truly desire guilt anymore. Does any part of me still want to bring a guilty past into my present? Does any part of me think it still serves some kind of value? That it will protect me or keep me safe from something? Find the part of you that believes that and forgive it. It isn't your fault that you believed guilt was helpful. You didn't know any better. You are forgiven, my child. Let go of that belief. Become the freedom that you long to be. Now I want you to look inside of yourself yet again. 
And I want you to look for the part of you that believes that by suffering from my mistakes, I can earn salvation. I can earn favor in God's eyes by punishing myself. I can show I'm virtuous. I can show I'm a good person if I just show how horribly guilty I am. This is also an innocent mistake. You didn't know any better but to believe this way. You were taught to believe this way. But see now the pride and the arrogance of this belief that salvation is a trinket on the shelf to be purchased, to be bought with a price tag, or that something good and beautiful and pure can be bought with something painful and sickening. Light cannot be purchased with darkness. I forgive myself for believing that my suffering would earn me salvation. I accept, as the Course says, that salvation requires no sacrifice. It is a free gift my Father gives me because I am His. I am like the prodigal son returning home, full of shame and guilt, expecting my father to treat me as a slave in his household for all the things I've done. And yet he throws his sandals and his robe off and sprints down the road as soon as he sees me coming towards him. And he embraces me with love and says, my child, I have nothing to forgive you for. I've always loved you and always seen you as pure and innocent. You're the one who needs to forgive yourself. So forgive that part of you that believes salvation could be bought with pain. And then look at that part of you with love and tell it the good news. Salvation is free. And if you felt a shift in your awareness from fear to love, if you felt any kind of miracle take place in your mind, take your hand and place it over your heart and give gratitude for this healing, for this miracle. Thank you for freeing me of the past by showing me that guilt is the greatest illusion of them all. I am free and I accept my freedom. And if you feel that in your heart this morning, just seal it with a deep breath in. And on the exhale, in that gratitude, bringing your awareness back to the room, taking your time when you're ready, you can open your eyes.
That was wonderful. Thank mm. you. So many levels touched in that. <laughs> yeah. It was really yeah. good. Thank you so much. So Wendy says, can you give another example of guilt as arrogance? This feels good for me. I want to embody this. I want to let go of my linchpin. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. And you know, something that comes to my mind on this is the way I think about it is the reason guilt is arrogant is because it disconnects me. That's number one reason. If I believe I'm yeah. separate, if I believe I'm separate, then I have to be special. And any form of specialness, be it uh, pride in how beautiful I think I am or pride in how messed up and, and I think I am, you know, either, either way that it goes, um, the first thing that guilt does is separate you and say, oh, you're special you're special. And it doesn't care how you're special. You can be the most special piece of shit on the planet, yeah. but it's going to convince you that that's how you're separate. And there is an arrogance about that. If anytime we think we're separate and that we're special in any direction, there is an arrogance underneath that that is required to mm -hmm. keep it, to keep it there, to keep it in place. Arrogance, pride. I think they're, I think you mentioned those two, mm -hmm. Aaron, but if those weren't there, it would be easier for you to release that belief in specialness, but it's actually yeah. like, so now we've got this, Oh, I'm special. I'm different. I'm not as good as anybody else. And then it's like that pride and arrogance is what kind of corners me and locks yeah. me down there. So. Yeah. Separation is pride. Cause it's, you're sort of saying I stand apart from reality. Yes. Like I'm different from reality. Also, Wendy, Guilt is arrogance because when you're guilty for something, you're saying reality is wrong. Reality made a mistake. Reality needs to be corrected because that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. How arrogant is that? It's me versus reality. Whoa, yeah. quite the arrogance behind that. And of course, Don't we can't see that. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, because we know where it leads, right? And um, to, to believe that I'm separate from reality is pride. To believe that reality made a mistake that I should correct is absolutely the highest form of pride. And the, the ego disguises the pride from us because it gives us this false humility of, oh, I just feel so bad for that thing. It shouldn't have happened. Oh, woe is me. But really, it's arrogance, isn't it? Yeah. And when you see how prideful it is to say it shouldn't have happened, you go, ooh, a hot potato. Like, I don't want to touch that. And seeing that reality is perfect, accepting that reality is perfect in the way that it is, it means that it's now impossible for me to say that anything's a mistake because reality is perfect. Well, how can reality be perfect if it made me have pain and suffering? And I think a better way of saying reality is perfect is reality is karmically perfect. Nice. I think that contextualizes it. If we're, let's just drink that in for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's a good one. <laughs> That's really like, ugh. If let's say we're all playing a video game, like a, a VR game, right? We're all in this game. And um, some of us start cheating at the game. It's like, well, just know this game is perfect. It allows no cheating. So cheat if you must, but you will pay the consequences. So we play the game for a while. We're having fun. And then some of us start to realize, hey, you know, there's this and that thing I can use to kind of get one over on my, my teammate and this and that and get more points if I skirt this little edge here. And people start cheating. And then after they cheat, the game starts punishing them and lowering them in the game on their score. And, hey, what? Come on, game. It's so unfair, man. That's like what we're like when we resist life. It's like you've been trying to cheat life with your ego <laughs> and life is perfect. It doesn't allow cheating. It's perfectly karmically just. So the beginning of humility is to be like, oh, no, I'm the one who made the mistake. It's not life. Let me lay down that pride and come with humility before reality and say, teach me. I'm your student. Mm, I love it. I love it. That's so good. So before we go into the midnight hour, let's do one more. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have two master classes today. Seriously, how does this relate to longing for the beautiful memories of the past and longing for them? For example, missing my children being small. Um, to me, that longing, a word that I, it's pining, like you're pining for the past, but in the center of pining, there is pain. And that's the thing to pay attention to. When we pine for the way it used to be, there is some, there's some sadness in there. There's something like this moment isn't quite right. 
you know, yeah. it's that, it's another, you know, it's we- another way to say wishing that things could be different, you know, yeah. um, and when memories are sweet and they make you feel happy now and they can add to the present moment joy, that's a different experience. But when we're pining, then there's a different uh, something here in the gut. Yeah. It just, it just feels like uh, a little mopey or something. Yeah. A little mopey. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the belief in lack. Mm, yeah. I Good. lack my two-year-old child. I only have my 17-year-old child. Yeah. So it's always an illusion to suffer from the past. It, there's never a reason for it. Yeah. Well, I want to add one thing onto that, and then we will pray out. Um, here's something else to be interested in, though. <laughs> if, you're, if you're pining for your two-year-old, are you missing the beauty of your 17-year-old? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, like and Great that's point. Kind of, you know, you have a 17 year old, there might be a little bit of challenges at times with that particular, you know, <laughs> they're 17, um, you know, so, so we miss the beauty of their becoming, we miss all that they are in the moment, if we're wishing for pining for something else. Yeah. So, or yeah. if you're looking at the way you raised them with regret, like oh, I was unconscious yes. at that age, and I didn't know any better. I only found ACIM when they were 15. And then, then my oh. parenting got better. You're looking in that rear view mirror at the junk trailer behind you. And yep. like Mark said, you're missing the present. And it's arrogant. And it's arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> Icing on the cake. <laughs> Cherry on top. <laughs> Indeed. All right, y'all. Um, but this is an amazing morning. What a great yeah, time. Wow. Thank this you. Was Thank good. you. Thank you, Aaron, for coming with um, Spiritual Guns Loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Locked and loaded. We had some church today. We, we did, did it again, dang it. We did, we did. So with that, (laughs) let us turn within.